Hey guys, let's make these awesome hats. So, the only thing you really need to know is how to make a hat on a round loom and also how to knit in the flat. So, we're not knitting it around, we're knitting in a flat. But essentially, everything is e stitch. So, you don't have to switch up any stitching for this technique. You just have to know how to e stitch. And e stitch is basically when you wrap the pegs in an, in an incursive E. So, we're going to be wrapping each peg in an incursive E. The only thing about working in a flat is that when you go back to uh, wrap your ease I usually skip the first peg so that's called a slip stitch but that's on you but I usually slip stitch the, the first peg and I wrap all the way down to the end and so when I usually work I end up taking care of that extra stitch that I missed and so now we're going to create the, the brim. So you're just going to bring the bottom up like you would normally do in your um, on your round loom. Take your beginning. Um, I'm going to start with your slip stitch. Put it onto the first peg to create your brim. Part can be a little bit tricky. So just think about your slip knot that you place onto your first peg it is actually a stitch that you have to use so that way you can take care of all the stitches and once you finish this part you are going to knit off like you would on a round loom your previous stitch onto your initial cast on stitch the um your last stitch is kind of tight so just be careful when pulling it over your initial cast on stitch because it would it will slightly uh, slide off if you're not too careful so now we're going to create another slip knot i like to create another slip knot to change colors so that it is more really appealing and that all my stitches start and stop at the same point and so you want to leave enough string to do your cast off because we're gonna do it all the way and this this is the end of the head by the way I did finish the head off of the camera and so like with your um, your round loom we are gonna cast off the same way just make sure you leave enough string to do all of your pegs but um, if you don't leave enough string, you can always pull it a little to give you give you some more uh, leeway. That should end up looking something like this in your brim area and your project. It was easier for me to line up my stitches because I did have some contrasting colors down there to make sure that each stitch lined up correctly. So you may want to think about that when creating yours, having multiple colors, but like that's up to you. Now I'm going to line up my flat panel as best as I can to make sure that all my stitches correspond with each other. It's good for you to stretch your brim out a little bit because I see that mine is scrunched, scrunched up some. And we are going to be going in between that first and second stitch to create the mattress stitch so that we can hide all the seams when creating when closing the flat panel make sure that you cut off enough string for you to sew your project together you 
You want to leave enough tail so that you can go back and behind your brim because the back of your brim is going to be open and so you can be able to close that up. We are kind of like going in front of the stitch and then we're going to go through the back area and then go up from behind the stitch to the front of the stitch on the next stitch. And now we're just going to crisscross between the first two stitches going back and forth with the corresponding stitch on the next side. That's why I said it's it's easier to recognize what stitch color you're supposed to do next because of the different colors. The color, even though that I'm using a blue color, is not going to really matter once you finish because it's going to be hidden within the stitch as well. So you're going to have something that looks like the stitches are on top of your project once you finish. But when you close, it will disappear. For me, I just really wanted to like close the brim. I wanted it to be done. But if you're a beginner, I would suggest not to close your brim just yet because I had some issues with trying to find out where to start back at. And that's me showing you that the other side of the brim is still gonna be open. So you're gonna have to go back and take care of that too. But that's how your stitching should look on the inside. I'm just showing you again that we are just going in between that first and second stitch to close it up on both ends of your flat panel. I just knew that I didn't need to pick up a blue, so that's kind of how that worked for me. I figured at this point you guys should pretty much have this down packed or, or almost there. So I just closed up the rest of this pretty quickly so we can get to closing the rest of the hat. Now we're going to close the head just like you would as if you were closing an, a head off a round loom. You're just going to close it the same. Um, it was more convenient to have that blue screen next to this because 
once I took uh, drop my strings in there, we're gonna close up that hole too. If you have any spacing, we're gonna close that up. Uh, but once I dropped the two strings down there, I was able to tie them together. You just have to be very careful to not pull the glue too tight because then you'll, you'll pull on your mattress stitch. And this is how your mattress stitch should look on the inside. Cutting your strands to loose, remember that acrylic yarn stretches. So you want to make sure that you leave plenty for you to sew back into your head. By the way, for me, I did not leave enough, but it ended up working out. So normally when I close up my holes, I do like a crisscross stitch. So I create basically a lot of plus signs in different directions. And they usually, usually close up the hole pretty well. And then I hide the, the uh, stitch, the extra string inside of the last stitches that I made making the hat. Because of the crisscrossing, that's the reason why it was really important for at least your grace string to be longer than what I made mine. Because I lost some string by crisscrossing. Now we're gonna tuck in the it's gonna be a little bit trickier this time um, working because you don't have that much space but just take your time and you should get it pretty well I like to pull out some string to tie a knot with and tuck it back in because it's just easier for me but you can take your string that you have on your needle and tie that off as well but it's just convenient for me to just attach it to a string that's already attached to my project I forgot to mention if you get lost just go back into the same um, um, stitching that you just came out of so if you have like I'm doing blue if I have a blue stitch that I just crossed over from that uh, space 
I'm gonna go back into that stitch to go up. And there you have it. This is my mattress stitch. And can you please uh, like, share, and subscribe and hit that notification bell.